Hello and welcome to Secure Your Spring based application tutorial. This is section 3 and we are talking about Spring Security Java configuration. In this section, we are going to take a look at basic and digest authentication. How do you configure Remember Me? How do you handle logouts gracefully? How do you authenticate manager, provider, manager, and authentication provider works? And how many types of authentication Spring Security supports? So, as the first video, we would be talking about basic authentication and digest authentication so what is basic authentication so this is the simplest http authentication mechanism where a http user agent so when i say user agent that would be chrome your any browser internet explorer or even your text browser like links curl those things so where that user agent is providing the username and password with each request so that's the your basic authentication http basic authentication but the major problem with this authentication is that it passes the credentials as a clear text. So unless you are using the secured channel like HTTPS, it is not secured. All right. So if you use the basic authentication, you must use HTTPS layer, SSL secured HTTP channel. Now, as the authentication works in Spring Security, you would need a filter and then you would need an authentication entry point. So that is the same funda everywhere in the authentication so if you are talking about basic authentication there would be an basic authentication filter and basic authentication entry point now we already discussed that it must be used over secure transport layer now basic authentication filter would be responsible for processing the basic authentication credentials which would be passed in the http header by the user agent we would need that filter agent to be added to our spring security filter chain okay we will see how do we do that now we will need an authentication entry point and the authentication manager will authenticate the each request that is coming into your application and in case of authentication failure this basic authentication entry point will ask user to provide credentials again and if the authentication successful the resultant authentication object will be added in the uh, security context as usual. So now let's do some code. Let's go to the Eclipse. So in the repository, in the section three uh, video 3.1, you will find uh, Spring Security basic and digest authentication project. This is the Eclipse project. Like the others project, it will be imported like an Eclipse project. Or even if you are using other IDs, you could have the option to uh, import that project as an Eclipse project. Let's go to the src main java and then the configure now the we are already dealing with the security config and in the security config we know where do we need to go directly it's the configure http security method where all the actions are happening now let's go to security config and let's open the configure http security method now uh, so we needed two things one is the filter and one is the entry point so let's first see the entry point that we just created so we created a custom basic authentication entry point. I have auto wired it uh, for security config to read it directly. So let's first go to this class which we created. This is extending basic authentication entry point. We are overriding two methods. One is the commence method. Second is the after property set method. Commence method is you are going to override if you want custom response messages sent to the user agent. All right. So if you see uh, this class basic authentication entry point you would have the commence method which has the uh, basic response headers but if you want to customize it you can override uh, you can extend this class you can create your custom uh, entry point and then you can provide that after property set you would see the realm name what is this realm name and this is important you need to provide the realm name otherwise it won't work it, uh, the project will fail so what is the realm name understand the realm name as in uh, scope or or, or kind of within application so if the user agent is trying to access the application uh, it can ask the server what is it what is the application so the server replied back with the realm name so the real name is here is spring even if you want to give the real name of your application you can give that your application so if you are creating a, a secure highly secured secret agency application give it a secret agency so the real name would be the secret agency right we need to set it in the after property set method now this is the authentication entry point if the authentication failure occur this will be used now we will need a filter and the filter that we need to add into the security filter chain now let's create a filter object for us 
So if you see this method, this method basically returning you the basic authentication filter object. Now in this method, we are creating the basic authentication filter object by passing authentication manager and the authentication entry point that we just created. All right. So how do you pass the authentication manager? Because uh, till now we just created the authentication manager builder or the user detail service. So how would you pass the authentication manager? From where will you get the authentication manager in this application? So if you see this class web security configure adapter, you would find a method which actually returns the authentication manager as a bean. So if you go to this method, this method is basically returning you the authentication manager object, right? So we are leveraging this method to pass the authentication manager to our basic authentication filter. All right. So let's see it again. We are creating a basic authentication filter object by passing the authentication manager and the authentication entry point we just created, right? And how we are passing the authentication manager by calling the superclass authentication manager bean method. Now, how would you set this filter? How would you add this filter to Spring Security filter chain? And how would you use the entry point? So the similar way, HTTP authorized request, pass the access controls, and then went to the HTTP basic because we are using HTTP basic authentication. We need to set the authentication entry point like this way. HTTP basic dot authentication entry point, give the authentication entry point object here. Now, add the filter to the spring security filter chain like this add filter the filter name right the filter object basically the what is the filter object basic authentication filter object which is being given by basic authentication filter method from here all right now this basic authentication filter is added and you have created the basic authentication entry point too and this is the http basic now let's see how that works this application is already started so I will go uh, because if you access this application using the browser, you won't be finding any difference because we have been using the HTTP basic from the start. But let's try to use it from the text browser or curl. So if you have the git bash with you, you would have the curl inbuilt. So let's use the curl hyphen I and let's use the URL of the application because this is already started. So this is my URL localhost. 8080 spring security basic authentication basic and digest authentication all right let's go and pass it on because i'm not passing the credential in this url let's see what happens okay so now this is the response that i got and at the end i got basic authentication you are not authorized full authentication is required to access this resource now this where this message is coming from so the the request is intercepted by the filter basic authentication filter which uh, checked the authentication object is there is or is needs to be authenticated is passed the request to basic authentication entry point and in the basic authentication entry point you had the comments method over here in the comments method where you had specified if there is an exception so you need to get into the response and response set header that this is unauthorized and you are writing the message over here basic authentication you are not authorized all right and passing the exception message too so that's what you received over here as a message now let's pass the credentials in the same application curl hyphen i hyphen hyphen user this is the curl uh, option let's pass the test user and the credential that is test 2 let's run it now when i ran it i went to tv home.jsp of my application and here this is my home.jsp which is actually welcome test user this is where i saw the logout and this is my session id all right now let's see the digest authentication we saw the basic authentication basic authentication is good as long as you are using the ssl layer https now what is authentication so let's get back to the presentation what is digest authentication so this is the other mechanism of http authentication which works on a nonce so what is this nonce so this nonce is a variable server generates and this is basically the base 64 uh, encoding of the expiration time 
and the MD5 encoding of the expiration time plus the key that you passes in. So this basically, what is a digest? Digest is, you can understand it, it is a hash. So it works on hash. So there are two things. One is the nonce and one is the hash or the digest, you can call. So what happens is, the server generates the value which has the base 64 encoding of the expiration time. The expiration time is uh, defined in the millisecond after which the created nonce will expire. All right. And the provided key, the key that you provide, this key should be private. It is basically used to encrypt your nonce, right? Now, similar to basic authentication, we need a filter and the authentication entry point here too. So here we would create a digest authentication filter and a digest authentication entry point. Now, the digest authentication entry point will specify the key and the nonce validity seconds. So what we need in the nonce is the validity seconds and the key. So that would be provided by digest authentication entry point. The default timeout for the uh, expiration time is 300 milliseconds. Now what happens once the nonce gets created? If a request comes in, it will be passed by filter and uh, digest authentication entry point and a nonce gets created by the server. After the nonce gets created, both server and clients create a digest that is hash so client will create a hash uh, by using the credentials and the uh, realm name that you just passed in uh, server creates the hash uh, in the similar fashion uh, it uses the credentials uh, realm name urls uh, those kind of thing now both hashes would be compared the client hash and the server created hash and if the password is different in the both uh, provided hash, then there would be authentication failure and it would be passed to digest authentication entry. So nonce is kind of, you can say a wrapper and under that wrapper, once that created, a digest would be created and digest would be compared. If the authentication successful, a simple flow happens where the authentication resultant authentication object would be added to uh, security context. If that doesn't happen, uh, authentication entry point will be uh, asked a user to pass the credentials again. Now, what if the nonce expire? Everything is set up. User has already logged in uh, with the correct hash, correct digest. Now, what happens with after the nonce expire? So, because the uh, default timeout is uh, roughly five minutes. So, what happens if the nonce expire? So, if the nonce expire and hash is already valid. So the digest authentication entry point will send a stale true. So it's not good for anything now. It's became stale. So it sends a stale equals to true into the header and the user agent, the user agent that is using either you are using Chrome or curl, the user agent will be sent a notification to try again using a new nonce. All right. Without invalidating your current user session. So that what uh, happens if the hash, the digest is still valid and nonce expires. Okay. Now let's see the digest authentication actually uh, gives you MD5 uh, encoded uh, nonce, but it should not be used. Why it should not be used? Because uh, the digest authentication filter needs the uh, user service. User service needs to be defined, and because digest authentication filter needs to have the clear text password access so it is not uh, a good digest uh, authentication is not a good authentication mechanism to be used so it needs a clear text password and you encode that password if you are using the uh, jdbc uh, user detail service or ldap user detail service or any user detail service and you have encrypted the password it won't work unless it is md5 which has already been uh, for so long and it's you know uh, security uh, breach uh, prone right now let's look how do we configure digest authentication let's go to the eclipse and let's go to the same class security config and let's go to the same method configure http security we do have another uh, authentication entry point which is the digest authentication entry point into the similar fashion that we created basic authentication entry point here we are extending digest authentication entry point and we are using the after property set method to set the realm name, to set the key 
and to set the validity seconds. Now, if you notice, I haven't overridden the uh, comments method. Why? If you go to digest authentication entry point, in the comments method, this is basically creating the nonce. So this is your comments method. And in the comments method, this is creating a nonce variable. So if you override the comments method, make sure that you are uh, giving the nonce variable. Otherwise, this authentication, uh, digest authentication doesn't work. So uh, to play safe, uh, you might not want, you don't want to override the comments method. And you need a, a once again a filter digest authentication filter so this is my method which is giving me digest authentication filter object so this object needs the entry point okay and the user detail service so we are creating the digest authentication filter object setting the authentication entry point here setting the user detail service here that we just created here is my user detail service all right it needs the user detail service so user detail service you need to set and it is returning the digest authentication filter object how do you set it into the uh, configure method let's disable the http basic and enable the your uh, digest authentication over here add the filter of digest authentication so in similar fashion you uh, added the basic authentication filter you are adding now the digest authentication filter and uh, the uh, authentication entry point you added with the HTTP basic over here you have to use the exception handling and provide the authentication entry point so if the authentication failure occurs the exception handling will take care of it and it will pass to the authentication entry point which is our custom digest authentication entry point all right now let's rerun this application build it and rerun it clean and build run it again all right so this application is up now if you see that if there is no login page that is specified by the application there is an authentication required uh, pop-up provided by the user agent that is here in this case is chrome now if i pass the proper user name and password it will take an directly authenticate me to the my home page now let's uh, do this uh, similar thing with the curl agent curl hyphen i okay so uh, because i haven't specified the user and password so it gives me full authentication is required to access this resource so there is an error now let's pass the user if you are using the digest you need to specify hyphen hyphen digest okay so now you are logged in so uh, we saw how the basic uh, http authentication and digest authentication works